All right, guys, welcome back to WDYD CSP. What do you do as a central stove processor? All right, we cleaned it in decon. Now we're over on prep and pack, and we need to go ahead and do our inspection for cleanliness and test for functionality. All right, so first things first, guys, is you want to go ahead and inspect this instrumentation for any damage. Check to make sure that it's not um, over the usage limit because, again, this has a use limitation and a process limitation. So become familiar with what each one is. Um, because if you're tracking your arms, then you should be um, tracking how many times you process this item. And the point of use will track how many times it's used um, on its system. So, all right, guys. We want to inspect for cleanliness, make sure there's no cracks or anything. Now, I know the IFU gives you the option to use an air gun to dry the item. Um, but drying, as I stated before, should be done in decontamination. So you shouldn't see this instrument dripping wet coming to you at the inspection station. But you want to inspect for cleanliness. So there's several ways you can do that, right? You can do a verification for cleanliness. Um, test you can verify it with a cleaning tool or you can use a boroscope to go down the cannula so this is important number one which is the actual connector block um, so we can go ahead and manipulate our boroscope to go down there and look for any foreign matter or any debris or even any internal damages right port one we're going to go into port number two which goes along the shaft of the instrumentation. Now this one here um, takes a pretty sharp curve here. So we wanna go ahead, go down the shaft. And as you can see, there's a couple of water droplets in there. I'm not really concerned about that because this instrument isn't dripping wet. So I'm not too concerned. And again, a boroscope is gonna enhance the size of the item. So these may look a lot wetter than what it actually really is. And we're going to advance this boroscope all the way down the internal lumen of this device. Um, and you'll see if there's any um, damages um, or any debris. So let me adjust this camera here so you can look at it a little bit better. And as I advance, you will see that it really doesn't look like it's moving at all, right? So that's a good thing because that means the internal lumen is very, very clean, right? There's nothing going on there. But as I advance through, you'll see there's a little water droplet right there. You know, a couple more little water droplets here and there. And that's not concerning to me, right? I'm looking for patches of soil or um, damage to that internal um, surface, which is, I believe, like a Teflon coating or a plastic tubing. I'm looking for damages for that. Um, and then I'm advancing all the way through. I might have to adjust my bore scope some to bring it down some so I can catch the whole length of the device. And you just want to make sure you had the right. So there you go. Here is the distal tip where the actual pulley cords are at, the wires. You want to make sure nothing's fraying, that there's no debris in there. So we did a very good cleaning and decontamination with manual cleaning and ultrasonic. All right, so we're pulling this the boroscope out. We saw no damages. We saw no bio burden in here. A little bit of moisture, but again, something I'm not very concerned about. I'm okay with this little bit of moisture. It's not going to affect anything in my processes here. All right, so I've already inspected my device here externally and internally. Um, so next, I want to go ahead and I am going to um inspect the distal tip with my lighted magnification right all right so let's take a look now when we inspect this distal tip we want to use lighted magnification and according to the ifu you need four times magnification now if you're using a lighted magnifier that is desk mounted such as this one here please make sure you see how much magnification is there the majority of these desktop magnifiers only allow for one and a half to 2.25 times magnification 
you need four times magnification. So this one here is only a two ton, 2.25 magnifier, but it actually has another little uh, spot on there that gives it five times magnification. So that's acceptable. Or you can use a microscope. Now, this one's my personal microscope. We don't have any microscopes um, in our facility, or I haven't been to a facility that utilize them. Now, these are available um, from different vendors, but this is mine's personally. It's a little magnifier with a little stand and a connector for my phone. And I'm going to show you what kind of image I got with this. You see this zoom that I have? Now, this is extremely over... Um, over amplified now you don't need this much magnification because the more you magnify the more you're going to find right but this is the spots you want to look take a look at you want to look at them pulleys and all those little um connectors and pins make sure that there's no cracks or any breaks or frays um you want to make sure there's no separation between the distal tip and the shaft and you want to just look at all those components, there's all those moving parts to make sure that there's no soils or any damage, right? Now, when you magnify it this intensely, um, you have to get used to how you move the device um, in order to stay focused and not leave the field of vision so easily. So you wanna go up to like the jaw area, make sure you're not seeing any debris um, or any damages again. You want to take a look at the pulley system as I am right now. I'm looking at that jaw again, looking at that pulley system, making sure that there's no adhesive, no blood, no frays, no cracks, no chips, um, that there's no damage to it whatsoever. Looking at the pins and the screws that hold the jaw together. All right. And that's another good look at the, at the pulley system. Take a look at that jaw. Okay. Keep that instrument open and make sure that the jaws don't harbor any bio burden or any foreign matter that should not be going into the container or into a patient. All right. So that is how you inspect. Okay. And again, I'm out of my vision here. I'm trying to get back into my field of vision, inspecting inside. So I open the jaw up all the way, looking at the base there. Okay. So you want to inspect every portion of this distal tip but there's a lot going on there's a lot of moving parts there there's a lot of connectors there so you definitely want to spend a good amount of time making sure that that's nice and clean and that it is functional all right so you can only do that with a microscope or a very powerful magnifier now we've confirmed function we've confirmed cleanliness um, we inspected the tip. Now it's time to um, lubricate your jaw. So there are lubrication points uh, pointed out by the IFU as well that you should do after every use. So the specific lubrication I'm using there is an oil base. You don't want to put too much of that on there. Um, you just want to put a small little drop and then you want to manipulate that jaw. Okay, so that you can get that oil into every little nook and cranny on the tip of that instrumentation. And then you want to blot off the excess as I've shown here. Make sure that you blot off the exit so that there's nothing dripping into a pan that may look like a wet pack. All right, guys, as always, stay true to yourselves. Until next time.